Me, 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 I thought about, you know what? Was, you know what? I ain't going to front. My journey through the through, through prison was just like, it was a lot. Like, I really thought that I had a chance at boxing, rapping. I had all the prison dreams. Hold up. I mean, I did. Stories from the cell. <laughs> we going to get straight to it. You know, what, you, know, you know what I find amazing? Me being out of jail six years. Everything that I thought I was going to do when I came home, I didn't do none of that. I thought I was going to be an MC, <laughs> right? So you thought you was going to come over and be a 40-year-old rapper? No, I was like, I was still in my 30s. Well, and yeah. I always had a little, a younger look. So I'm thinking like, damn, I will be able to make it. You got to understand, in order, like, like when you in jail, the, the ideas that you have is unmatched. You got to think about it. I, you know, when I think about it, you know, I always knew that I wasn't coming back to jail. But I always was experiencing the new shit all the time when I was in jail on the aspect of just, Doing research, understanding. How many times did you talk to me during the time I was in jail? That any time you talked to me, you talked to somebody different. Yeah, well, every time. I had a bunch of ideas. Mm -hmm. No, because this you got to no, do. See, what you need to do is you that's the joy of jail. Like, what you need to do because <laughs> brother so and so said. Let me ask you a question though. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, uh, life isn't going your way. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. Yep, you caught your wife uh, cheating today. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. Mm -hmm. Thought your check was coming and it didn't come your way. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. This is still five times. It's five. filtered three times for that clean, crisp finish. You can Chris. drink it straight up. You can drink it on the rocks. You can mix it with juice, soda. You can just make a classic New Amsterdam mule. Yes. That's up to you. But when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you get you some New Amsterdam Vodka. Why? Because it's the official vodka of Barstool Sports, so why wouldn't you get why it? Why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you get it? I mean, when, when my wife at the crib with her girlfriends, they cocktail it up all on the, all out there on the deck. Just New Amsterdam and cranberry. New Amsterdam and pineapple. New Amsterdam and... Well, sometimes they be drinking straight up of one girlfriend. She just yeah. drinking straight she's, up and just she's, act bananas when she She goes, she throw it back. And she throws it back. She's a throwbacker. Yeah, but uh, when you're out about it, your local liquor store, get you some New Amsterdam vodka, and it's just like that. Right. When when you when y'all call home and y'all give them of that game, dude, like, how do y'all feel when y'all go back to y'all cell? Like, y'all like, yeah, I gave it to him. I had to let him know, like. I, like, do y'all feel like y'all accomplished something? Like, yeah, I feel, I feel like, especially when you can talk to somebody and you call back two, three times and they keep answering and they hit, yeah, man. Especially if you catch, see, it's, it's different when you catch them on the downtime, if they in the crib, you really like, yeah, I just blazed it. I gave him the game, man, because of what he need to do. Because when you in jail, you know everything in the world. Can't nobody tell you because you read all these books. You read a bunch of books. Uh, you, you, you're smarter than the average dude that's walking around you because the average dude's walking around. Everybody's not on a on a game in jail. Jail is just like street some type of way. It's drugs there, it's violence there. So it mimics the streets in some type of way and everybody's not on a game. So if you one of the dudes that's smart in jail, one of the readers and read stuff, you can't wait to share with information with somebody like you because you want to be like, I, this This is, it can be camouflage that you change. Sometimes people do change and sometimes they don't, but it can also be a camouflage on the aspect of, I know something now. I'm different. I'm smart. You need my advice because you don't know what's going on out there. You're out there, you're on drugs, you're running around. You don't really know what's going on. You don't got to take time to sit down. Because me personally, I always feel the two things that I thought about jail, three things. Number one, it's the only place in the world where it's though when you're tired, you can rest. You can't do it out here. If you're a man in the real world, you cannot just uh, rest because you got all these responsibilities. You can't just rest through the day for no reason. Yeah, let me sleep for two days. In jail, you can just go to sleep when you want to. You can rest when you want to. You can have a job, but don't have a job if you, when you want to. I think that was a part. And then I also thought it was one of the most respectful places on earth. And then number three, the reason I say respectful places is because the, the level of violence can be so brutal and so rough that 
you're going to respect everybody around you. Because I me, I was a guy that, that made it through jail based off of respect. Respect, respect, respect. I wasn't trying to be tough. I wasn't trying to be a bad guy. I just wanted to make it through because I knew that bitch. it was dangerous. Yeah, that you know, you can camouflage it, whatever you want to. <laughs> I was smart because, <laughs> you know, once I think, I think during the journey of it, once you see somebody get hit with a lock and a sock, <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa. Like, when you see, you hear that sound of that, that thump that, when that shit, when that joint be like this, you be like, that because you know, you like, that was a lot that connected to his beat. That's what a motherfucker. And a person grabbed their head and they, and they scream for like a minute and, and it don't come out to like a, within a half of the minute it come out and they just looking at you with, with that passion in their eyes of defeat. <laughs> Bro, that's different. How to scream, big. It'd be wild. I did it before. It'd be like, you just be like, all you hear is that. It'd be like, hold up. That joint right there. That's the joint. Yeah. When you hear that, you be in pain just looking at it and you get scared for yourself <laughs> even though you ain't got nothing to do with it. You just scared. You're like, I'm trying to get out of this. Please open the door. I'm trying to get up out of this yard. What's going on? Because it just be like, that joint? That one joint. I remember like it was yesterday. I heard that a couple of times where we, yeah, you, because what it happened is a lot of times you, a lot of dudes don't know what's happening. Because most of the dudes I seen happen, they either got snuck or it came out of nowhere. Yeah, man, I ain't, I ain't going to keep arguing with you, man. I ain't going to... What? And that's going to be like... That, hold up. That joint? Bro. And, and what they do? As soon as it hit, it'd be like this. <laughs> and a person retreat like... They retreat, but when they retreat, it'd be like this. And they get this face of... The face of the feet be like... They screaming. It's a it's a um a nonverbal scream first. <laughs> because they gotta build up the process. Cause I'm telling you, it's a nonverbal joint. They gotta build up the process. In that moment. That's too much for this. No, listen, that moment, yeah. cause when that joint hit, mm. and that joint, as soon as it hit the biscuit, that biscuit. You already know being a spectator of this sport. That's the the sport of violence is you, you're a spectator. If you're in a cell, you're walking by, the spectator of that sport is like you immediately know what that means. You immediately know somebody biscuit is, is <laughs> buttered. <laughs> they buttered up. They, they cracked their biscuit uh, uh-huh. open. You know how soon you know that biscuit is open. Now. How the scream is. It'd be like this. Hold up. When that joint hit and he grabbed his biscuit. Cause it's like defeated, it's the defeat in their face. And they like retreating because they backing up and they watching them. And they just take that one joint, they grab their biscuit because they know it's leaking, it's leaking now. And they feeling that stuff go through their hand, that blood, it's like, they might have a do-rag on them, a homemade D-rag made out of a shirt, whatever it is. It went through the do-rag, I'm talking about, it's going through the wave, the, the Murray's grease. Mm. The, the the waves, mm. the do rag, and he just like mm. this, and it and that joint hurt so bad he just let the scream out. Ah! It'd be different. That's a different joint, bro. That joint had you like I'm taking PC. I heard that scream a couple times. I was like, you know what? I ain't gonna hold you, cause I was like, damn, I gotta get, I gotta take PC. This this ain't working for me. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. BC. <laughs> no, listen, listen, cuz. Cuz. <laughs> you think it's a joke, man. Somebody split open. Them stitches, them ain't the, the liquid stitches, them the real joints, but they got to take the thread and get your biscuit because your biscuit busts open like this. That joint just be bust open and it be swelling. That's a different type of joint, man. <laughs> that joint hit. Hold up. You think that's funny, man? That's the joint I heard. That shit, man, changed your life, cuz. That screen changed my life. Had me, yeah, man. Had me ready to take PC plenty of times, because I'm like, why do I need to be around this? I didn't sign up for this. Because, listen, man, I rethought all the all the criminal activities that I had, you rethink them, because you'd be like, damn. Like, I ain't, I ain't really tough as I thought I was. You know, when that hit, right, no, straight up. I 
All right, let's talk. I'm good. They ain't really tough as I thought it was. Yeah, that's a that's a real reality. And the reality of it is, let me give y'all. Let me let's switch from stories to the sale of me and Osworth a game. Even though I'm crying, laughing right now, the real reality is a lot of realize they ain't as tough as they thought they was when it's too late. You know what I mean? Because the real reality of it is everybody screaming their real until it's time to do some real shit until you put in a real situation. So when you running around here with all your homies, y'all shoot them up, bang, bang. Y'all screaming out, y'all kill, y'all screaming. Understand that none of them ain't been put to the test yet. It's easy to go out there, shoot them guns, do all that crazy dumb shit. None of them ain't been put to the test yet. The test don't come until you get caught. That's when the test come. Or that, you get shot. Or you get shot. Or, 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 if you die, the test is done. The whole exam is finished. So the reality of it is, man, a lot of y'all niggas need to slow up, man. Get the fuck out them streets. The same energy you put in them streets, you could be putting into something more serious that could help you in the long run. And that's the reality of it is. A lot of niggas think they tough, but they don't realize they ain't as tough as they thought until they up that moment state pen and then you got to do what everybody doing because you're not going to come in here and f- this bid up nigga. no you're not you're not doing it them OGs man they've been plenty of times you know when you when you first get in jail run around loud and the more old head told me one time yo we don't do that here man all that loud shit, man take that in the yard man we need people sleep on this block man turn that shit down I'm like yes sir sir yes sir mm-hmm. and we never had a problem out of me again Mm-hmm. Cause the way he looked at me, he looked at me like a, a, a he looked at me on the aspect of a grandpa slash murderer slash booty water slash. This gonna be the opportunity for me to come get you. <laughs> don't tell me this. Don't don't give me any kickback. One more time, <laughs> I said you ain't gonna never have no problems on me again, sir. Sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think uh, just just. Just being realistic and being scared is real. I ran into like one person that was in jail with me. They used to Jay Large, my one seller. He used to be like, "Man, I was scared." He was always, he was always, he he didn't be like the only dude that ever told me in jail that he was scared. Everybody else was the toughest dudes in the world, yeah. and everybody else, you know, you know what? I think I think what it is is that our culture has hyped it up like it's a badge of honor and shit. That's why I'm mother. You know, you had some people like, "Damn, you always talking about jail." Yes, I'm never going to stop talking about it because I got to let people. I got to warn people that they don't understand what's going on. Because everybody see the street aspect of I'm riding around, I'm doing this. Bro, you're going to jail. Somebody going to tell on you. Mm-hmm. Because cause if I told any young boy right here, any young boy right now, and I said, listen, young boy, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you one question. <laughs> Does operating the streets, you got 15 years? Could you do 15 right now? No, I can't do. That means you're going to get busy. Cause you out here operating outside of the law, right. and you can't. You ain't got fifteen in you. Right. So what we talking about? And then no, 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 no. The shit you doing that? That that's a that's a that's a thirty. No, but even fifteen, I'm just being nice. Yeah. That's no, I ain't doing no fifteen. No, I had a young boy sit all time. Man, I ain't doing no fifteen. <laughs> but you shoot. That time come with way more than fifteen. Yeah. So that don't that don't add up. You gonna get busy. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, as y'all can see, man, we giving y'all episode where we taking it back to the essence. To the essence. Me and Wallow, we came in here today. Wallow was on one. He said, "Cause let's just go in there and do a motherfucking episode where we taking it back to the essence." So I was like, "All right, come on, turn the mics on. What you want to talk about?" He started it off with motherfucking stories from the cell. So obviously, he had some jail doing his mind. What else you want to talk about? You know? I always do, actually, like. <laughs> Cause I was talking like 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 you know one thing, third thing I realized about jail. Jail the only place in the in the world. No, in America. That you get three meals. Nowhere else. Nobody else is eating three meals a day in the world. Like in America. That's the only place where you eat healthy at. You're not eating healthy out here. That food ain't healthy. What you mean it is healthy? No the f is them not. three trades is, no, them is trades be looking like some bull. No, them trades are standard. Don't do that. Them trades, them trades are standard. For who? <clears throat> I don't give a fuck, dog. You looking up prison trades and all that, dog. That who the fuck 
I want to eat prison food, bro. You out here eating roof crisps. You talking all that shit. You out here eating. Let me hold the phone. Cause you no, I'm asking. I'm asking. Saying certain shit. If J. Large answered the phone, I'm asking. This is J. Large who was locked up with Wallow. See if you how much respect he got for the He don't even answer the call. J. Large probably busy eating the plate. Eating uh, the platter. He don't even answer your call, man. It's crazy, man. And why you calling J. Large? That was his name. <laughs> Thank God you ain't on camera, them show. On who? On Cam and May shit. <laughs> that was his name. Certainly. And y'all had a nigga you grew up with named Booty Mac. Yeah, that's different. Oh, yeah, that's, that's my OG. He never did time, so that name is not filthy like you think it is. Yeah, but that's still filthy. That's a filthy. Hey, hey Dave, crazy cable Dave. I'm I'm right here talking to Gil. I need to ask you a question. Now, what? the reason his name Cable Dave because he's just still cable back in the way set people stuff. Wow. Listen, in jail, that's the only place you get three meals. Ain't them three meals you get a day that the, that the prison feeds you healthy? It is healthy. Thank you, man. You gonna sit here? And and lie, ooh. I mean, healthy, meaning that it's small portions. And it's healthy food, you're vegetables. Gonna get, you're going to get a vegetable, a starch, and a fruit or something. It's like, if you eat that shit, but the thing be fucking us up. Is it commissary? We be cooking. Right, the commissary. The you eat it? And, the, and all that shit. Okay, so, 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 so you saying you was, you was happy with the prison system food? No. That's well, what the you talking about this? It's healthy though, right? But, but yeah, but it's nasty, Gil. Uh, exactly. You mean to tell me in the feds they had nasty it's food? It's not healthy though. You you mean to tell me the feds they ain't had good food in the, in the chow? Yeah, the feds had good food in some spots. Yeah. Thank you. Oh man, burger. Good. You was in day. the f- state. No, I was a chef though, so our food was good. I knew what I was doing. Especially if you worked in the kitchen. Thank you. Oh my god, I was a kitchen warrior. Ooh, uh, ooh, you you on this. I worked in the kitchen. Me and Siegel worked in the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, you were. What, 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 was you the cook or you was you doing pots or, or prepping the onions and shit? What was you doing? I, no, I was um, just doing the table settings. Oh, you was, oh, you was, you was a table. Wait, you was a prison, oh, prison the waitress. Man, though, he was a waiter. All he was, waiter. My was in the kitchen and working for the cops, cooking their food. So that's where all hey, the hey, food Hey, let me just say this, right? You got a whole special on um, next on American Gangster, Dao Bay, the prison waitress. You was, was a waitress. A f- prison waitress. At least I was a chef All up north. Time. Why do they say that on American Gangster? You what was a f- f- prison waitress. No, I wasn't a waitress. Yes, you was. You, <laughs> was, de- de- you was a table decorator. You <laughs> was waiting prison. tables and you shit, was a man. F- me, me and Siegel. We used to sit there. And Wait, we hold on. Beans was Beanie Siegel was, was the not prison doing waitress. Yeah. Hold up, I'm calling Beans. Wait, uh, wait, hold uh, on. I'm calling you wait, back. Wait, I'm wait, calling you back. Beanie Siegel was the prison you back. waitress. Hold up. I'm calling you back. Oh, I'm calling Beans. I'm calling Beans. I'm calling Beans. Beanie Siegel was a prison waitress. Was decorating prison tables. I'm calling Beans. Oh my, I can't. I'm calling Beans. The Broad Street bully, Lord have mercy. Call Beans. He probably got another number. Call Beans. We put him on the this. He getting him on the phone. The Broad Street bully. I can't believe this. Hey, shit, I'm man. telling you, man. I, I want to hear this shit. this shit, man. I don't got beans. I got beans in number. Hold on, man. Call free. We got to get beans. Track beans down. Hold on. I know who. I know. This who. is crazy. This is fucking crazy, man. Oh my mother God, man. I can't believe this shit. This is deep. This is doubt. Because I was a chef up north. That's my a little. Brother. Listen, brother, listen. We need you to get Beans on the phone. We need to find out. So me and Gil is right here. Call Beans. Hold on. This, yo, this is deep, This man. is deep, man. Because I was a chef up north. Yeah. That's different. Could have got left up north. No, that don't count. Yes. That don't, that don't, that don't yes, no. he, yes, he could Kiss have. wasn't talking about me. Yes, he could have. You was, you know, that's but the I only didn't. reason why the I was a chef, you. so I get left. That's the only reason, because you dice the oh, shit out of them fried onions. You do it. That, that was the only reason why I didn't kill you. Because every time Good kill you, slide him a sandwich. Psycho. We cool, right? <laughs> sandwich get you it out was, the yeah. I, I was serving some gangsters, some sandwiches. Uh, no. yeah, got yeah, you out yeah. a lot of motherfuckers. Say your ass a couple times. Yeah, it might, might up. Them gangsters, they want to eat that barbecue chicken. I used to make them platters. <laughs> me and Willie Ice. Yeah. It was a platter. Oh, for one of the barbecue chicken, huh? Yeah. 
I can't believe this, man. man. I hope Beans answer, man. Yo, Beans is out of pocket. Damn, man. That man, ooh, put that on Beans, man. Beans, we was doing the tech. Come on, man, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that, man. Broad Street bully. We got to give Beans a chance to defend himself, man. Yeah, man, we got to get Yeah, he ain't answer. Yo, I got Seagull, Seagull on the Hey, floor. Beans. Hey, Beans. He, is he on there? Where is he at? He right there, yo. No, Be- he not. I don't hear him. Yeah, he hung up. Hold on. He yeah. just was on there, y'all. Hold on. Beans got a cricket phone. I'm on him. I'm on Beans. Stop about this. Come on. Free, let me find out you got a cricket phone, Free. No, Free got a mobile phone 15. He want them. Free be having a brand new shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hold on, I'm going to voice Listen, see, he got a see, cricket. No, that's beans. Free got a cricket. I'm telling you, free got a cricket. <laughs> Damn, I didn't even know they had prison waitresses. No, that's not really what you do. I think that's, you know, when you don't really want to do nothing. So you just be wiping the tables and just putting the pepper and salt on them. So it's not like you waiting to give nobody no food. You're not bringing that to the table. Yeah, but you decorate the table for the dudes who came in there to eat. You might have a point. I never looked at it like that. Yes. I know. Yo. Hey Seagull. Yes, sir. Hey, hey listen. Hold on, hold on, Beans. It's me and Gil right here. Listen. Beans. Ooh, just, Beans, man. Yeah. Ooh just told that we 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 live on the podcast, right? Before we let this shit and we gotta go get across you up the here. air. Before we let this shit go right. across the air, we had to let you defend your yourself. So while Ooh and Ooh talking about prison jobs, and Ooh just gonna bust out and say, Yeah, me and Beans used to do used to decorate the tables in prison. I said, so hold on, wait. Beanie, see, we oh, say, yeah, Dao Bay, Dao Bay. He talk about, <laughs> he talk about, he talk about, yeah. I said, so wait, you and Beanie C who was prison waiters? He was like, no, yeah. He was Yo, like, he said that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, y'all was decorating the tables. Y'all was putting the salt and pepper, wiping them down. Putting, You know how you put the salt and pepper on the table? What y'all doing that? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Come on. Stop asking who said that. Hold he up. can't. Tonight, crazy. No, we we didn't want no song. Pop us down. <laughs> what, did, what, no, what you? What was your job? Did you have a job in the joint? Yeah, I had a job in there. We had to uh, we had to roll up the forks in the in, in the in the salt and pepper. <laughs> okay, and y'all just put them in the trays. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you had to do. That was behind the scenes job. Bees was a prison yeah, waiter. He tried to throw you. He said, "Yeah, man, me and Bees, we was waiting tables in the joint." He was lying, man. Who tried to? Who was a motherfucker, man? He said Bees was a prison waiter. I said, "Wait, what?" Get the fuck out of here, man. Hey, listen. We had to roll them forks up, though. But wasn't the food good? Wasn't the main line food good? I don't know. What? You ain't never eat the main line food? A couple times when they had like... See, he was commissary boy. He ain't, com- he ain't commissary. Man, that shit wasn't good. I had, I, had, I had four commissary lists. Oh, yeah. He was killing them. Wait, that shit wasn't good. He yeah. said he was trying to hype the prison system food up. I'm just saying it's good. It's healthy food. It's food. not. That shit get is three nasty. Meals a day. Get the fuck out of here. You get three meals a day. What you talking about? You, you eating that motherfucker. Let me call Dao. Hold up. Stay right there. Let me call who? Because who try to who try to throw you under the bus? Don't hang up. Call this boy, man. Who's another ass man? Yeah, who try to blaze him? He ain't gonna answer now. Mm-hmm. Do that man to but yeah, man. <laughs> uh, he hung up. He, hold up. This shit hung up. Yeah, man. That's fed up, man. I just found out the Broad Street bully was a prison waiter, man. Man. Can't believe this. Yo! Ooh. Hey, listen. Hey, ooh. Yo. I got beans on the ball. Beans, see you a liar. He wasn't doing that. Shit. You was wait. <laughs> you was a <laughs> waiter in jail. You lied on beans. I'm not lying, Steve. What? What was you? No. Ooh. We, we, I mean, what did they say first of all? Them dumb. <laughs> oh, listen. It's cool. They trying to say he was prison waiter. <laughs> 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 Dave was busting tables in the joint. 
Dave gonna say, yeah, me and Beans was waiting. And then, and then he gonna say, and then he gonna say. I told him we used to wrap the forks and knives and shit. No, you he ain't did, say that, no, ooh. Ooh, you then, ain't say that. Then, listen, he Beans, and Beans, he gonna add in, yeah, Sieg used to be mad at me because he ain't get no tips. <laughs> <laughs> He said, he said people used to throw him candy bars and shit in the cell. <laughs> Yo, the bottom line is that in the feds, they make you, you going to have a job. And we picked the kitchen oh, and, we the and that's where all the good food was at. That was, we had the layer. That was a layer. We, we had the boy that used to cook. And matter of fact, you know the guy, he, he used to have the boy cook in the kitchen for the cops. They bring out all the pizza, yeah. all the nice Yeah, they got the good food up in there. Pizza they love it. Yeah. Yeah, they, well, you know, that's, what, that's what I did. I was uh, cooking for them. What, yeah, Beans, you was a prison bad. cook? <laughs> Hold on, Beans. Yeah. Beans was a prison cook, too? Yeah, Beans was a chef up north. Oh, 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 my God, they trying to get us. Hey, cool, you know they're going to try to get us. Hey, hey you was, listen, I was a chef up north, too, though. You uh -huh. know what I mean? I was a chef. I was a five-star chef, though. I cooked the greatest for it. Yeah, I was a chef. See, he I come was, out. See, I was cooking for the for the law. For who? <laughs> Beans, don't say that. Beans, no, don't say that. Don't, be, don't, don't say you was beefing. Say. Don't say you was beefing up security. Because if you cook with him, you beefing the security up. He's talking. About, I was cooking for the law. <laughs> Damn, Damn Beans. So that be that be you was really seasoning and, shit and everything. You really was in there cooking. Yeah, I ain't gonna front. Damn, dog. It was, that's a job. You get to steal all the free food. So, so let me ask you a question, right? Let me just ask you this question. Beans, how did it feel? How did it feel you just left off the motherfucking street with two Bentleys and a motherfucking funky ass CO tub of yo, make me a tuna fish dish. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> was you in there? Was you in there like, ooh, you? Bitch. All right, I got you, you, bitch, you <laughs> funky. Bitch. When I did, I took culinary. So Me too. When you, when I, I took the culinary class, so I got the job because you know the you had the class that to cook for the police. They was making the same old. So once I got back there, like you could literally cook anything. Yep, and take all the out of the you, get, you got you access to all the vegetables, the garlic, and all that. Ooh, you know, why the you sound will. so happy, man? You ooh, sound like ooh, you want to go ooh, back. Yeah, who don't mind a good six months ooh, right ooh, now? He ain't ooh, going in and turn that joint like, on. Who sound like he got a little ooh, something ooh, in that joint? Hey, ooh. Anything that I would say that is an incarcerated ass. Talking about, ooh, one mind of six months. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to try to say, ooh, ooh, got something in there? You see, this boy Gil Rissy. He think everybody got something in jail, man. It's a motherfucking crazy, man. Got something in there, you know what I mean? This is a nut, man. This dude's a nut, man. All he want to do is bid all day. He did that, listen. See, what's up, baby? You came back down the way and turned it out. We had South Philly jumping, man. <laughs> he he having a prison reunion. Jumping, Listen, see. he having a prison reunion right now. Yeah. See, ooh, I'm yeah, telling you. Ooh had a reunion. You know ooh. Hey, ooh, I ain't going to hold you. Ooh, ooh, I ain't going to hold you. They said the Philly car was heavy where y'all was at, man. They wasn't playing no games out there. Philly wasn't playing in the feds. <laughs> That was a soft joint we was at. That was a laid back joint. Oh, he was at the golf joint. The joint they got golf and tennis courts, and you get to get home visits. Yeah. No, we had, a, we had bocce courts and shit up there. That shit was soft yeah. for school kill. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was fun, though. It was That was a good gym. It had weights. Oh, man, I'm done, man. I'm done, man. I'm done. Hey, hey, old head, we getting you off here. We on live on the podcast. You talk about jail was fun. I'm getting you the fuck off here, that man. That spot was fun, though. Oh, my oh, goodness. What the you type of example? First of all, what type of an example you setting for the youth out here? Tell me, yeah, that shit was fun. Like y'all was away at camp or something. You tell me, yeah, you yeah. lie, free. The best thing, boys and girls, is to never go to jail. Period. Right. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. This go here talk about it. Yeah, that was fun up there. That's, I told you, you got a little something up there you missing. <laughs> <laughs> He 
like, yeah, he like that. Yeah, that's the joint Kevin the Stallion was at. <laughs> oh, shit, here you go. You got locked up total on the plug, though. Who is hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 Beans. Hey, Beans. Kevin the Stallion. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, hey. Gil got locked up told on that plug, man. That's why he ain't making the top. The I know what the fuck You told on 2D. The fuck you snitched it because 2D was see, in jail. You see, got out before. First of all, first of all, you see you him telling him right now. You tell him 2 was the plug. Right, okay, oh, yeah, 2 was my fault. Right. Yeah, yeah, because he told on 2 because 2 was in there like a week after He's him. A I'm like, how the fuck you get out before 2? You made a statement on 2. Two, it was her. She had. It was an Asian connect. It was Asian. It was an Asian connect. You told him. It came, from, it came from China. You told on it. You told on Tootie. So fuck, blew the whole China plug up. Hey, you think nobody know what happened? No, y'all niggas was just sloppy. You That's three. Why, why you be getting all them vacays? Yup, all the vacays for, for no reason. First of all, first of all, first of all, y'all three was just some sloppy. He think you he was me? a professional criminal. And I was. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and, then, and then let's keep it real. He let's think keep he was it a real. professional let's criminal. Let's keep it real. And yeah. let's keep it real. Freeway did a little punk for one and a half months about a broken deuce deuce back in the day. Yeah, Free did his bit. Yeah. Got his life together. Yeah, for, <laughs> he was down the house of corrections. They got four and a half months out of Free. For he was holding down the house in corrections. They he got a block on lock. They got, they got four and a half months out of him. 422 with a broke firing pin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we going to holler at y'all, man. We on the mission. This episode of Me and I's Worth a Game is brought to you by Body Armor. Real hydration. Real ingredients. Packed with electrolytes. Vitamins and nothing artificial. Body Armor is a great tasting sports drink with a bunch of different flavors. Not only do we hydrate with Body Armor, but some of the best athletes in the world do it as well. Christian McCaffrey, uh, touchdown Joey Barrow, uh, mm-hmm. Ronald Acuna Jr., uh, C.D. Lamb, even though it hurts me to say this, because C.D. Lamb played for the Cowboys. Yeah. But C.D. Lamb also hydrates with body armor, as well as my good friend who you see me playing basketball with at LA Fitness in California, Bryce Young. So uh, body armor is available in stores nationwide, but you can head over to body armor store on Amazon and get yours today. Once again, it's available in stores nationwide, or you can head right over to the Amazon store and get it shipped to you firsthand. Right. Right. This episode of Million Dollars River Game is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter. Right now, I want to give a shout out to everybody whose job it is to hire people. Everybody whose job it is to hire people, I want to give them a shout out. From the small business owner growing their team to the HR director hiring hundreds across the nation, mm. you have one of the toughest jobs there is. Yes, you do. But what if I were to tell you that there's something that can make your whole hiring process Faster and easier is Zip Recruiter. Mm. Once again, this is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. And right now, you can try it for free at ziprecruiter.com slash game. Instead of you doing all the hiring work, Zip Recruiter work for you. I'm talking mm. about you. Once you post your job on Zip Recruiter, it's send it to 100 plus job sites mm. so you'll reach more of the right people. I'm talking mm-hmm. about the right people you're looking for to hire. Zip Recruiter. Powerful technology scan thousands of resumes for you to identify people whose skills and experience match your job. ZipRecruiter is trusted by millions. Mm. So don't you worry. Don't you worry. You know, hiring heroes, let ZipRecruiter help make your job easier. Four out of five people who post on ZipRecruiter get qualified candidates within the first day. Yes. See yourself. So, you know, check it out for yourself. You don't have to believe me. One go, day to this, go to this exclusive website and try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash game. Again, ZipRecruiter.com slash game. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter. Right. Yeah, but no, man. I told you the food in jail was good. No, the fuck it wasn't, man. Food in jail is never good, man. No, I'm just saying, I'm not saying it to advertise it. Yeah, don't ever say no shit like that. None of that, but it was to like... all the young niggas out there, don't you ever believe that shit? It was healthy food. Don't you ever listen to them old that was on the, just on the phone talking, but yeah, it was fun up there. No, it's not. It's not fun when you can't get no pussy. That ain't, that ain't no fun. Motherfucker in a Russian headlock. Motherfucker, every day you waking up harder than Russian Jeopardy, and you can't do nothing about it. But hug your own ain't nothing fun about that. Ain't nothing fun about hugging your own. Wrong. Hold up. I just like to call people sometimes. It was motherfuckers hugged for five for five years. So it was fun up there. 
Hello. Pinky, how you doing, Pinky? What's good? This Wallow. You know you have me locked in? Yeah. How you been? I've been okay. You know what, man? I just was calling you, man, because listen, we was they was talking about when I was in jail, man, and how me and you used to date outside of in my, in my fantasy, but like how do you feel as though? I want to ask you a couple questions if you don't mind. It's me and Gilly right here. What's up, Gilly? How you doing? We 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 live. We filming right now too, just to let you know. We live. Oh, thank you for telling me. Oh yes, oh, okay. here we telling you. Yeah. <laughs> now I want to know something, right? Like, do you know how many people you you, you like, I'm talking about you you smooth so many dudes jail time out doing jail, right? And have I want to know? Have you ever dealt with somebody in jail, Pinky? Um, I mean, I've dated someone who's been to jail, yes. You never did a bit with nobody? Um, what do you mean? Like doing time with somebody, like somebody you writing them and going to visit them and stuff? Uh, well, kind of. When you say kind of, what do you mean? You not, ever- not, well, the person didn't have no major time, so... And we was, we had just kind of started dating and um, things was going really good. So like, I kind of like accepted his calls or put my money on my phone to talk to him and make sure he had everything he needed on his books like that. Damn, but it wasn't real. a long period of time. You know, it was only like a few months. So Man, she did well eight I eight weeks with him. Been with anybody that had no long, crazy time where I had to go, you know. Right. She wouldn't have been there for you. And visits and conjugal visits and crazy stuff like that. No. You Tell him you wouldn't have been there for him. No, I'm just saying. I ain't saying she would have been there for she me. She wouldn't have been she there did a for lot you. Of but I have a friend that I have a friend right now that is a female who's been locked up for some years that I've been holding down. That's that's solid. But y'all grew up together. Yeah. Nah, we just worked in the industry together. Oh, she was and, she um, was a popular star. Yeah, Kimmy Stevens. Kimmy Stevens, pull up, Gil. I, I she was really a um, oh, you jerked off to her. She trust went me. viral a lot of times for having a crazy uh, body. Her name Kimmy and, Stevens. Um, she would do a lot of hostings and modeling, and then um, I think I want to say she only shot scenes for me and my company. Damn, Kimmy Stevens. And what happened? She's she been locked down. She's been locked down since, like, oh, it's been a minute. They gave her, like, 20 years. What state the f***? Was she, and, had to, was um, she knock somebody off? In Georgia. Woo. Um, so, um, dang, she she been, she been gone since what? Man, it's been at least 10 years now. Damn. Damn, that's crazy. And man. we wasn't like the best of friends. We was just kind of cool, hung out just a couple times. And she like oh, worked for me, but she up, didn't bro. have nobody. So I was like, you know, so I just been holding her down and keeping in touch with her and sending her what she need and sending her packages and just whatever I can, just because she don't really have everybody who she do have either like stop or they fell out of contact or it would be like different different guys and she didn't want to have to depend on them and I'm like I just wish if I was ever in a situation somebody would do it for me so I've just been holding her down the whole time that's crazy you a real one Pinky uh, you a real one for that and then my cousin he he my big cousin he older um like we cool but he just have a really good relationship with my mom it's my mom's nephew and just based on the relationship that they have, and that's my cousin, I don't pay his and all his kids insurance for the whole year, just to their life insurance to make sure it didn't lapse. So I'm I'm loyal. I, I help when you I can. Real one. That's just the type of person I am. You's a f-ing real one. I just feel like, um, you know, it just all comes full circle. God's blessed me. In so many ways, like I could have all the stuff that I used to do, I could have been like dead or yes, you could have disease I couldn't get rid of, you know. And mm-hmm. I just been so blessed to come as far as I've came and been blessed with a beautiful family, you know. So I'm just grateful, and I just always be feeling like 
I just wish what somebody would do it for me if I was in the same situation. That's all. Now, let me ask you a question. I hope when I can. How do you feel about the industry now versus the transformation from the regular industry that you was in to now only fans? How do you feel about the whole transformation? Um... Well, first of all, I was happy that finally so many girls from the industry had independence where they can make their content and immediately make money where, you know, you're pretty much Xing out the agent, the company, because, you know, people get taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So now finally girls were in control, making a lot of money. And I felt like, oh, wow, people start, they're not paying attention to hating on me so much. Everybody happy making money. Like when people doing good, it's not, you know, people collaborate more, they happier. Oh, they was hating so on you like, like that? Oh, this is cool. They was hating on you? Yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been hate since the beginning. But I just noticed that with more girls making money and doing their thing and finally, you know, seeing some income and some benefits from their work, girls is happier. They more willing to network. They have a better attitude. So I could, I could see it and feel it just from, you know, it wasn't so like some girls that used to be real stank wasn't stank no more. They was happy because they was making money. Mm. So I was like, Oh, this is cool. But now fast forward, I feel like with only fans trying to do that social media stuff is so many men on the platform thinking we want to see them. It's like, what are you doing? This is not social media. Like this is an adult site for what you mean you know, want to see them? To make money. Like guys are starting accounts as fans, like they pay, and then they switching their accounts to a paid account. Like, why would we want to pay to see you? You came on here to pay to spend money on us. Mm. And now they switching and then you get a notification saying, oh so and so start change their page from zero to five dollars a month. It's like, dude. And then next thing you know, they're in your feed, and you're like, "This is crazy." So I go to yeah. the dots at the top and put hide, hide um, users posts from my feed. That's like, crazy. don't nobody want to see that? Don't that's crazy. Page. So yeah. I feel like that's kind of just twisted that so many regular people is getting on. So now I feel like, dang, you know, platforms like OnlyFans and, and um, you know, doing live webcam or stuff like that. I've been doing this stuff for years, but maybe mm, on different exactly. platforms or platforms of my own. So the, the thing about OnlyFans is it's like a really good, you know, platform. They give us a bigger payout. It's a lot of different features with the statistics so you can know, you know, just different stuff to how to manage and what you want to post and this and that. So it's cool. But I feel like as soon as um, mainstream media started name dropping it and celebrities started talking about it, I'm like, dude, this is not good. It's not good because now you got all these eyes and ears on us. And this is something that we've been, been doing. But now the popularity of it, now you got you know, the credit card processors, the feds, just mm -hmm. all of these, you know, people looking into this and looking into that. And so now girls, they don't really understand the law, don't understand the processes. So they keep bashing, oh, only fans this, they they're making us do this. There's restrictions on this, there's restrictions on that, but they don't understand that because of all the popularity, now the company's being looked up, looked um looked at under a microscope. Uh, Let me ask you, you a know, question. It was, it, don't laugh, please, because I don't want to embarrass him, right? So Gil, Gil was going through a little problem, right? We went, out, we went out to California to get him surgery, right? You know what I'm talking about. Uh-oh. Now, now, when dudes lose erection, what is the best, you know, treatment you think to these guys? Because he, he was going through him and his wife. So I said, all right, listen, man, you got to figure this out. What is the best, you know, because I know you've been in the industry. I know you've seen dudes go out. Like, how do you straighten that out? Well, most of the time, it's diet, exercise, and sleep deprivation, mm -hmm. and stress, and anxiety. So, hold on just a second. The drone went out, cuz. I'm just trying to help. God, yeah, I'm man. just trying to get you help. You're asking all these dumb ass questions, man. I don't know if the ain't going to never go out till I go out. That ain't, that ain't true. My dick ain't going to go out till lights, God turn my lights the fuck out. My 
still might be hard. <laughs> you hear this? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... I don't, I don't really know because... He's 47 right now, so he having issues. Man, I ain't got no issues, man. He lying he like a issues, mom. He pinky, he got issues. He trying to come back. <laughs> he lying like a mom. But listen, I just want to I just want to say this, Pinky. Thank you for helping me doing a bit. You was my girlfriend and didn't even know it, but you was. I know you. She she didn't want to tell the truth about you know, but it is. You was a lot of people girlfriends. We loved you in the prison system. You changed the game. You really helped dudes get through their time smoothly. Um, and I just had an artist. You know that really wasn't her though, right? <laughs> but that was her. All right. What you mean? It she was, was not me. I'm sorry. <laughs> that wasn't really. I don't want to kill the fantasy, but that. Pinky, that wasn't you was me. on all the pictures that I had in myself. Yeah, but that wasn't her. You know how many people Im- uh, imitate and copy my photos and make fake pages and I um. No, I didn't say that she was right, me, and then I just said I had a, I had all the material in jail. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I had yeah. your material, and I was in the fantasy that you was my, you know, my girlfriend. That's yeah. all. She was well, doing Peggy, time. We appreciate you for tapping I just in, like baby. To think that that I help people, you know. Yes, you did. Yeah. Peggy. So he looked at your that. picture and he jerked off. No, we ain't gonna say all that. Yeah. It sound, you sound a little too rough. It would sound like it's not personal enough. It was more personal than that, Gil. What the fuck you do? Fuck the picture? <laughs> no, we had a. Okay, you talking about it was more personal than that. You talking about you looked at the picture, you jerked off. What See, Pinky, he don't understand the. She didn't don't, say nothing. He don't to understand you. the you illusion. Didn't say nothing to her. He don't understand the illusion in the fantasy that professionals like you provided. He just don't understand it. That's why he's talking like this. Uh, all right. Well, a lot of people respect it though, because yes, I mean, I mean, you know, the, the internet always tell tell the lies, but in person, I have nothing but love and respect from people. I know, and I love it. But listen, I love you. Thank you for uh, you know helping me through the uh, process, and I'm gonna call you soon. I have an artist that want to meet you, man. His name ESTG. He said, "Pinky, I love her." So I'm gonna plug y'all up. He just want to meet you. Tell him I say hello. Okay, thank you. All right, y'all have a good one. All right. Damn, I heard you talk about I love you. I, I, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. did. It. <laughs> I told Pinky I loved her. Yes, you did. Did I? Did I say that? I just got a that's, that's a jail flashback, guess. That don't count. Nigga said, okay, I will talk to you. I love you. And uh, I'm like, yeah, Did I say that? Yes, you <laughs> did say that. No, I did. I didn't say that. <laughs> if I did, that's some jail stuff. That was in jail. I got a flashback. Did I tell Pinky I love her? I, well, I wanted to tell her that when I was in jail. So if I told her, uh, she helped me out. She did. Damn, that was wild. It was wild. Long nights. A lot, of, a lot of Jergens, Vaseline, baby oil. It was just a great thing. Why you think about it like that? Twiddle in your thumbs. <laughs> and the fact that Beanie Siegel was a prince. <laughs> the, the, yo, dude, that was crazy. Beans is crazy. Beans and Ube, f- Americans gangster. You know what? what? I'm gonna I'm I'm set up a phone call so people could call and we could just, you know, just bid with the people. Bid with the people, man. People is just unbelievable, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But this was a, this I had some, I had some fun today with you, man. What you thinking about? Man, that was crazy, man. I, I'm just fact that I got pinky number in my phone. I could just call. Hey, <laughs> man. you know how major this. I never told nobody in jail about that either. I gotta write the book. Like you know, I could call pinky anytime. <laughs> One day, I'm going to ask her, but one of the homies called from jail, one of the old school homies that did the real time when they had the smut books, I'm going to call Pinky on the three-way. You know how, you know how major that is going to be for one of the homies in the joint? Mm-hmm. I'm going to be legendary. Mm, you'll be all right. I don't know about legendary, but you'll be all right. That was crazy. Yeah, you called Pinky. Legendary porn star who used to jerk off to in jail. We love you, Pinky. All right, bro, get over it. All right. Damn, that was she was crazy. out here living on my life you was behind bars looking at a picture with, with your hand lubed up like the inside of a mom in Camaro man you know how major that was and <coughs> just like that right